From Hart Crane to Waldo Frank Dear Waldo, For many days now I have gone about quite dumb with something for which happiness must be too mild a term. At any rate, my aptitude for communication, such as it ever is, has been limited to one person alone, and perhaps for the first time in my life, and I can only think that it is the last, so far as my imagination from the conception of anything more profound and lovely than this love. I've wanted to write to you more than once, but it will take many letters to let you know what I mean, for myself at least, when I say that I have seen the word made flesh. I mean nothing less, and know now that there is such a thing as indestructibility. In the deepest sense, where flesh became transformed through intensity of response to counter-response, where sex was beaten out, where purity of joy was reached that included tears. It's true, Waldo, that so much more than my frustrations and multitude of humiliations has been answered in this reality. And I promise that I feel that whatever event the future holds is justified beforehand. And I have been able to give freedom and life, which was acknowledged in the ecstasy of walking hand in hand across the most beautiful bridge of the world, the cables enclosing us and pulling us upward in such a dance as I have never walked, and never can walk, with another. My new book. I'm sitting in the sun outside the Olympic office building, amid helicopters and Hondas. I hear the grating sound of a mailbox being opened by a young man who does not dismount from his bike to drop his envelope. I feel sad that his missive has such a little way to fall. I note these things for you, hoping to make myself more concrete, more like this young man's bicycle seat, less like the tune he is whistling. Flute phrases flutter up, oboe phrases drift down. We perceive changes in frequency as vertical movements in space. I'm convinced it's not linguistic habit that engenders this misperception. Over there in the lacy shade, there's a scent of marijuana, like the impression an unusual character makes on the mind, like the scent from the homeless man beside me on this bench. Such a lively blending of order and disorder. Such a lot to restore. Piece by piece, I enjoy the work. I lie on my side on grass, leaves, twigs, and ants, as though lying on mercy and judgment simultaneously. I'm reading, as I never read before, watching boys steal a soccer game from an unsuspecting summer as I never watched before. It might be their eleventh summer which leads only once to their twelfth, whereas all subsequent summers will lead back to it, its mornings collapsing softly, muffled by the clamor of birds gathering and jostling in the bare scaffold tree-cutters left behind, by the wind-chime quintet Stan has hung above the door that dares us to push, by the horseshoe clopping of a black woman dressed to show off her exquisite balance. You know I'm trying To find you with all my hands Trying to let my breath fly free in you Oh, but I know that This world's so deep and full I don't know where to start I don't know if I'll be Able to see it through I know you want me To light up my mind Still I pull the darkness around me And yes I know that Although my tongue is dumb Although my eyes are blind I can count on you to see me Say the word that grounds me Pakistan, Pakistan Oh so debonair Lonely man, lonely man Hanging in the air Pakistan Pakistan
see you Say the word that grounds you Pakistan, Pakistan, don't forsake my bed Lonely man, lonely man, I'm still interested Pakistan Pakistan